back to look at our lives tonight on a night like tonight where there's an extra day seeming like an extension of time when God calls us to see by the spirit what you're saying to the church corporately and what you're speaking to us individually about how you plan to get us into your divine will and purpose now Lord hide me in you so that your people only experience your presence and only hear your voice in the mighty name of Jesus we pray somebody say get there get there you may be seated in the presence of the Lord you may be seated in the presence of the Lord we're living in a season and time of what I would call sifting and shifting can you say amen, amen. we're living in a time of sifting and shifting you know, Jesus, when he said to Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. But he said, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and that when you are converted, that you will strengthen the brethren. Sifting is not necessarily a negative process. A sifting is used to remove out that which is impure so that there can be purity for the use of purpose. Often they use sifting for a moment of separating that which keeps the grain of wheat from becoming pure during the growth process. And so when the process of growth is underway, sifting takes place. But we're also not only in a sifting time, but we're in a shifting time. Somebody say shift. shift. Where God is transporting and moving pieces to a puzzle of heaven's design in place with a multiplicity of gifts so that the plan and purpose of God will begin to come to pass. I just came from one of my mentees who is now moving uh, to, to take shape and take a position with Dr. I.V. Hilliard in Houston, Texas. And uh, years ago, I spent time mentoring him on how to develop his bylaws and articles for his church and helping him with his ministry and those sort of things. And he's only been pastoring a few years, but preaching for a number of years. And all of a sudden, it seems as if out of nowhere, God picked him up from one place and transported him into another place. Somebody say shifting. We're in a season now in the body of Christ at large of sifting and shifting where God is moving and maneuvering people and putting the gifts in the place of where he wants them for an end time harvest. Can you say amen? The reason why this is happening in the time that we are in is because along with the shift that is taking place by the Spirit, there is a shifting of things that are going on in the world that we're living in as well. When you look at the valuation of the dollar that we're in, it seems that the value of the American dollar seems to continue to decrease on the world stage, but the euro dollar is increasing until somebody shifted. You look at the Brexit, uh, uh, Brexit, where you look at Great Britain that is pulled out from the European Union and their contribution toward the global summits of global governance that will begin to happen on the earth. And if you look at our, even in our terms of our academic achievement in our school systems, our school systems have set standards of learning, but many of the school districts are lowering down and beginning to shift around the grading scale to accommodate everyone so that people have the opportunity to simply graduate from high school. Isn't it crazy in our day that with the use of technology, everybody has become an expert on something? <laughs> Social media critique is just off the chain and it becomes something now in our time that sets the stage, determines the platform, and now shapes how we think and feel and what our attitudes are towards certain kinds of things that have happened in our lives. What I want to say to us about all of that is don't let it fool you. God is on the move with shifting and sifting some things in the earth so that there can be an alignment between heaven and earth for a breakout of a very strong revival that is coming. As Christ is soon to return, our adversary, the devil, is throwing everything he can at the believer. Come on, can you say amen? And the kitchen sink, cat that bit the dog in this season that we are in 
and it doesn't seem like things are working and the times and ways in which we think they would work. If we are honest, many of us are in this kind of a moment along with the shifting and the sifting. For us, it is the best of times and the worst of times all at the same time. I wish somebody would talk to me anymore tonight that it is the best of times and worst of times at the same time. We've never seen times like this before where we've got access to the word of God, even an understanding of the ways of God, but yet we're finding ourselves in moments where there's a lack of clarity concerning the will of God. Yeah. We seem to be confused about the will of God in our times, even individually and corporately. Watch this. Because of scenarios and circumstances and situations. But child of God, I must remind us, we can never make an assessment about the character and the nature of God because of changing circumstances and situations that can be easily manipulated. Uh, do not base your understanding of who God is and based upon his word because of sliding slopes and slippery scales. Uh, the times that you are in are so designed to present themselves in such a way that you will question the very mandates of God and question the very anchoring of God and question the very ways of God. But right on a night like tonight on a leap day where God's trying to get somebody there, I want to point my finger in the devil's face and remind him of what the scriptures said about Jesus, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I need to tell somebody tonight that God had changed his mind about you. Tell somebody I'm going to get there. Yeah, see, this is how our adversary, the devil, causes deception in our lives when we change our view of God based upon easily manipulative circumstances. See, the imbalance, Pastor Steve, of a prosperity gospel preaching coupled with the pie in the sky theory has led many astray from the continuum of scripture. The idea that because I have met Jesus and gotten saved now that I never have any trouble is just wrong. Yeah, right. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Come on, somebody. Wrong, 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 wrong. Yeah. Uh, as believers, it seems as if there are different pockets in the body of Christ that have forgotten the words of Jesus to his disciples on the screen behind me in John 16 and 33. He said, these things I have spoken to you yeah. that in me, somebody say in me, in me, that in me you may have peace. peace. And in the world you will have tribulation or trial or trouble, but be of good cheer, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. I gotta pause right here and tell somebody, I don't care about how bad it looks. I don't care about how bad it feels. God has not changed his mind about you. He has not changed his mind about what he has said. He has not changed his mind about what he's going to do. And he will get you there from here. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, this is my that. Is my and that. I will get there from here. Yeah. Oh, I wish somebody yeah. would talk back to me in here on tonight. Come on, tell somebody, this is my that. And I will get there from here. Yes, I did. That's exactly what I said. As broke as you are, yeah. as depressed as you are, yeah. as frustrated as you are, yeah. as upset as you are, yeah. as mad as you are, uh -huh. I need to tell you that this is your that right now. And God is about to get you there from here. Yeah. I wish somebody would talk to me tonight. Yeah. The Apostle yeah. Paul yeah. picked up the sentiment saying these words that we are more than conquerors. He asked the questions to the Roman Christians in the Roman church in Romans 8.35, he says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Watch Paul. He says, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. He goes on in verse 37. Look at it on the screen behind me. Paul says, yet. Come on, somebody shout, yet. Yeah. Paul says, yet in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I got to pause again right here in the message this morning. You know, a conqueror wins or overcomes by fighting. 
Paul says that we as believers, that we aren't just conquerors, we are more than conquerors. Yes. More than conquerors are those that win even before they fight. I can hear the hip hop song in the back of my mind right now. All I do is win, win, win. Oh, wait, I need another one right there. There are moments where you're going to walk through some stuff, but God's going to ensure that you win. Tell somebody, I'll get there from here. Yeah. See, the deception of Satan is that God must not love us, that God must not care about us, or that God is angry with us. Because watch this, there are moments of delay and appearing denial or moments of dis or dissonance concerning your destiny or somehow that you are not in the center of God's will because of a present condition or because of casualties. I got to tell somebody, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. La, la, la. <laughs> la, 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 la. Don't you base your understanding or your confidence in God based upon a changing scenario or easily manipulated circumstance. That is what Satan is supposed to do. Give you the appearance of a thing uh, with it not actually being the thing so you will give up on what God has said to you. But you got to point your finger at yourself in the mirror in your bathroom and tell yourself, I will get there from here. Would you look at somebody and just point at yourself? Don't point at nobody else. Point at yourself and say, I will get there from from here. Amen, somebody. Look here. Uh, listen, as a matter of fact, I would say it this way. I would say the fact that you're in trouble means that you got God's attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to tell somebody the fact that not heaven is breaking out in your life is the fact that you got God's attention. The fact that it's hard for you and that it's troublesome for you is the fact that God had changed up his mind and the devil sees you coming and he's just trying to get you to quit right now before you get into your destined season. But I came tonight to lift up my voice and ah! tell you that the devil is alive and God's getting ready to hop, skip, and show you across a process that will normally take people years to get through. But in this season, in this here, on this leap day, on this leap night, you get ready to come right in to what God has already preordained in your ah! life. Lord, somebody say, I will get there. I'll get there. Yeah, now, oh, oh, oh. If you're watching me by social media tonight, this year of clarity and focus, the truth is you're frustrated. I need to tell somebody in the room and somebody watching me tonight, you're frustrated. You're going through life of doing your day-to-day -day thing. You've even gotten increases on the job and you've even gotten more money. You've even had promotions that have come to you. You've even had opportunities that have opened up for you. But if you tell the truth about it, if y'all tell the truth about it, you just as mad as not heaven right now. <laughs> Sitting up in here in church tonight on a Saturday night, you might as well be honest with yourself. You are not content in where you are. And some of it is necessary. It's a holy discontentment because it should say to you that there is more than what's in store for me right now. That God's got more for me. But on the other side, you got to just throw your head back and rest assured that God will get you there from here. Come on, somebody. Listen. Listen. In the text, Jonah, a servant of the Lord and prophet of God, was right in the middle of his this. But the struggle to get to his there and the text reveals some keys about how we, about how you and I can get to our that. Listen, when Israel was having a tough time, right after the first exile, while they were having a tough time, or I should say the second exile, God raised up a prophet named Joel to begin to speak to Israel. Tell somebody, this is that, and I shall get there. He raised up the prophet Joel on the screen behind me, uh, chapter 2, verses 25 through 28. Listen to what it says. Uh, Israel was upset. They were losing everything. The wall of Solomon's temple was on its way down. Nebuchadnezzar had come in and wreaked havoc against 
fix everything. And God raised up a prophet and said these words to them. He said, so I will restore to you the year. Somebody ought to just holler right yeah, there. Yeah. And the prophet Joel said, so I will restore to you the years. He didn't say days. He didn't say weeks. He didn't say months. Y'all didn't say that in here tonight. I said, the prophet Joel with the crumbling walls of Jerusalem, with the artifacts of the temple on their way into Babylon and into Persia, when everybody yes, was losing their mind, people were running crazy in the streets. The prophet Joel stood flat-footed and said to the people of God, so I will restore to you the years. I'm talking to somebody by the Holy Ghost in here tonight. You have wasted time, but God told me to come in here tonight and to tell you I will restore to you the years of watching the swarming locust that has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, here it is, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. God wanted somebody to know I sent it. It wasn't the devil, it was me. Don't nobody want to talk to me in here all day night. I'm telling you tonight that God will shift you and he will move you to where he wants to move you and where he wants to take you even if he got to send the army himself. Oh, y'all that ain't here tonight. Y'all been there playing with me tonight. If we're going to be here on a Saturday night, we might as well have church. I'm trying to tell somebody, I'm in the Bible on tonight. Listen, the Bible says concerning David and Saul, the Bible said an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul. If you check the text of the scripture, at the time where David is having the anointing poured out on his head at Jesse's house by Samuel, God sent an evil spirit to begin to plague Saul. I wish somebody would talk to me in here on tonight, which is to say that God will raise one up and he will take one down. He'll lift one up and he will take one down. When God gets ready to shift you, he will do whatever he's got to do. Somebody say, get there, get there, get there, get there, get there. Here it is, here it is. Here's the shout for me right here. Verse 28 on the screen behind me. And he said, it shall come to pass afterward. God says that I will pour out my spirit. Wait a minute. I'm going to restore the years. And then I'm going to pour out my spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to restore the years. Yeah. And then I'm going to pour out my spirit. Here it is. On all flesh. Even that which thinks God's going to pour out his spirit on it. Here it is. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Here it is. And your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my main servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I got to stop right here because there are some men servants and some main servants that have been walking with God a long time. Amen. Right. I need to stop right here. Somebody watching me on social media tonight. You are a man servant and a maid servant of the Lord. And it don't seem like you have seen nothing yet in my life, in your life. But God told me to tell you tonight that he is getting ready to hop, skip, and jump you across the process. Because you're in a leap year right now. And that God will get you there from here. And God told me to tell us in the walk of dominion to make up your mind, stop complaining this is your that and he will get you there from here somebody hot at me here tonight he said listen watch this now right in the middle of this text I'm going to get there Steve, hold on right in the middle of this text Jonah is in a moment where he's in the middle of his this his this is his that and God is about to get him right to his there for right where he is. Amen, somebody? And if you want to get to your there right from where you are, one of the things you got to have a commitment to, Patea, is you got to have a commitment to stay in the presence of the Lord's presence. Yes. Ah. Yeah. 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 What costs you years is because you go out of the presence and come into the presence and go out of the presence and come into the presence. But if you're going to get to God's there for your life, you got to have a commitment to staying in the Lord's presence. 
Look at somebody and tell them, stay in the Lord's presence. The Lord, the text says that the Lord came to Jonah. I don't know about y'all. I'll get ahead of myself. But God came to Jonah. People who are really called by God, God comes to them. Come on, come on. God came to Jonah and said, I want you to go to Nineveh and tell them folk what I said. But the text says that Jonah began to flee from the presence of the Lord. I came to tell somebody tonight, you can run, baby, but you can't hide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can run, but you can't hide. I didn't tell you that the hand of the Lord is on your life. God had changed his mind about you. He's going to do what he said he's going to do in your life. God's going to use you the way that he plans on using you. And you can do whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, for as long as you want to do it. But when God says it's time, it is time. Oh, you just missed a good place to holler, yell, and scream in here tonight. Okay, I'm not going to do it this way. Let me talk to some people in here tonight that have ever messed up some things in their life. That have ever uh, gotten into some moments where they got tied up with the wrong people and got tied up in the wrong places. They got tied up doing the wrong thing. Got tied up in some wrong moments. Uh, uh, but I came to tell you tonight that that didn't mean no never mind to God. He hadn't changed his mind about you. And though you have been in your wilderness season, you on your way out of that because God's getting ready to hop, skip, and jump you across that to get you right in the middle of your purpose. I need to tell somebody tonight, you are sitting right now just as drunk and as high as you are watching me on social media. Know that you are called by God to preach the gospel. Know that you are called by God to prophesy to others. God told me to tell you tonight, you're getting ready to be right in the middle of somebody's pulpit. Let me talk to some street preachers right now who are hiding in a club environment right now. The high is getting ready to leave you and the presence of God is getting ready to come back on you and when it does this time, make a commitment to staying in the Lord's presence. Is there anybody in here on tonight that says God, I ain't running no more. God, I'm not leaving no more. God, I ain't walking away no more. God, I'm going to stay right in your presence because I'm trying to or crisis or calamity uh, even though we think that because of our comforts of cash, cars, cribs or crowds, that, well, that will make God change his mind. Uh, check out David on the screen behind me, Psalms 139 and 8. If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold you are there. And then tell somebody, that will make God any difference. He's going to be right where you are when he has made up his mind and he will come right to where you are, pick you right on up and put you right in the place of where you're supposed to be. You missed a good place to grab a ceiling fan in here right now. Because I need to talk to somebody watching me tonight and somebody in here. You think that God has changed his mind because there are other folk in front of you that are giving their blessing now. And it seems like they're living their best life now. You, as a maid servant and as a men servant, been walking with God a long time. You've been walking through toil and difficult moments a long time. And you think that because things don't look a certain way that God has forgotten about you. I need to tell you tonight that God has changed his mind about you. Oh God, I might as well preach the Bible now, Steve. The Bible says that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. I need to tell you, God's getting ready to jump you right into a destiny moment. This is your death and you can get there from here. Somebody give him glory. My social media night. I'm just bold like Pastor Senior because it's a leap service night. Somebody watching me, you done left out of the walk of dominion too fast, too soon. You done got in that other place and you are sitting on the sideline trying to figure out how am I going to get into the arena of God's warfare where he's called me to. I need to tell you, you need to get your happy hips up and get your hips right back where God has already set and ordained you. Yes, I'm talking directly to you. 
is kind and you are coming out of that thing. Oh, God, help me in the end of life. When God has made up his mind, it is time for you to live out your purpose. I'm not going to talk. When it's time for you to be a deacon in that church, you're going to be a deacon in that church. When it's time for you to preach, you are going to preach. When it's time for you to be the trustee, you are going to be the trustee. When it's time for you to be the seed, of that company that you are supposed to start and have Bible study at lunchtime, you will be the CEO of that company and have Bible study at the lunchtime. I need to tell somebody, here it is, you got tired of that relationship, you got tired of that marriage, and you broke up with that person, and you went through that divorce, but when God says, I'm sending you Boaz, or I'm sending you Ruth, you are going back into matrimony to be an example to somebody else and you are going to be blessed when God says it's time it is time you can run but you can't hide this is your that you might as well make up your mind and say yes Lord I'm coming in I'm going to get there from here somebody give it glory right here Jonah has already 
uh, identify to some degree of who he is and let them know I'm running from God. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Basil, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop is after me. He asked me to preach on the, on the Youth Sunday in June. It's February, and you trying to stay out of church. <laughs> come on. Uh huh. And you know good and well. And so now in the moment, they ask Jonah, look here. Why is all this trouble coming on us? Because God will let it get so bad that it will cause sinners to cry out after him. Mm. Y'all didn't hear it. Y'all didn't hear it. That God will cause the sinners to cry out after him. <laughs> if you watch the text carefully, Aaron, the text gets real interesting. Because the text says that after they cast the lots, and then Jonah says, look, y'all ain't going to be all right. Look here. This is what y'all got to do. Y'all got to throw me over. He said, y'all got to just throw me over. They get afraid because they know Jonah is a man of God. So they start throwing stuff off the ship themselves. Y'all not here. They start throwing stuff off the ship to lighten up the load so they can make it through the storm. If you don't do it God's way. If you don't do what God has said, you can try to lighten your load all you want to. But until you give God a yes, the storm is not going to cease. Until you give God a yes, the trouble will not stop. And so in that moment, they decide, okay, Jonah says, look, y'all might as well just go ahead and throw me overboard. Tell somebody, stay in his presence. Yeah, come on, tell somebody, stay in his presence. And tell somebody, be clear about your purpose. So you got to understand your identity. They come to Jonah, Sister Donna, and they ask Jonah, they say, who are you? And Jonah responds back to them, and Jonah begins to say to them, uh, 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 I am a Hebrew. Uh -huh. I know the Lord, and I belong to God's people. Oh, God, help me in here. Pastor Senior, can the Lord please deliver the church from self-proclaimed five-fold ministry people? Self-proclaimed. Jonah don't do uh, uh, like, we, like, like most of us do, Steve. He, he, he don't introduce himself as our prophet so-and-so. No, just say your name. Jo Jonah don't go into all of that. I, 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 I'm evangelist. I, I'm missionary. And I'm, no, Jonah knows he's running from God. Jonah just says this. Uh, I am a Hebrew. He identifies himself with the people of God. He says, he says, I am a Hebrew. I'm from the nation of Israel. And I know the God of heaven and earth. To God that the church today would get back to identifying themselves. As, I am a Christian. I am a child of God. And I know the God of heaven and earth. When we get back to laying down the titles and just identifying ourselves with who we are and I promise you, you won't get there from here to there. Because when cancer shows up, they don't care that you imagine a show and so. The issue is, can you get a prayer through? When HIV shows up, they don't care that you bishop show and so. Can you get a prayer through? But when trouble and calamity shows up, I don't care about the name of your church. I just want to know, is the power of God there? And I came to tell somebody tonight, God had changed his If you're going to get there from here, not only must you have a uh, stay or uh, have a commitment to stay in God's presence and be particular about your purpose, uh, but you also have got to have a change of perspective. Tell somebody change your perspective. Change your perspective. Yeah, it's all about how you see it. See, in this text, in this moment, Jonah has an opportunity. The men have an opportunity to see things from God's perspective. What Jonah is in is Jonah is in the moment where he's running from God and God has said, you're not going to run from me, but you're going to do exactly what it is I said for you to do. And even if I got to send a storm, I'm going to send a storm and I will keep the pressure on through the storm until you give me a yes. Yeah, come on now, come on. Oh God, help come me on, in yeah. here. Oh 
on tonight. See, what is happening here in the text is that Jonah is trying to run from God by going to a whole different city. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on. He, God says go to Nineveh. Jonah want to go to Tarshish. Uh, let me talk to the people tonight who, who are trying to do the will of God and do the right thing in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let, let, let me just say, I talk to nobody in here, but this one, I'm just talking to the people watching me online. You want to be the preacher where you want to be the preacher at, uh, but you want to do what it is that you want to do in the wrong place. I can tell you that the rain and the storm and the thunder and the clouds are going to keep on acting up right in your life until you give God a yes. You want to preach over there, but you're supposed to be an usher where God assigns you at. You, you want to be prophesied way over there, but you're supposed to do children's ministry where God assigns you at. You, you want to go and, and lay hands somewhere else, but you're supposed to be on the minister's roster for where God called you at. You know what I'm talking to you on tonight. You can't do God things your way. You got to give God a yes and get back to where he called you. Oh God, I wish somebody would talk to me in here on tonight. Somebody holler course correction. Yeah, somebody holler course correction. What God will do is give you a course correction to change your perspective. Here's what I mean. You can see the storm as punishment or you can see the storm as a course correction. What God's trying to do is change your mindset and how you think and orient yourself to him. And so he will do whatever is necessary to have a conversation with you about how you think. How you know, preacher? Because Jonah just comes to the place where Jonah says, look, this man, look, just throw me over. Come on. Yeah, yeah, just throw me over. Yeah, come on, somebody say, Lord, just throw me over. Oh, you miss another good place to holler, yell, and scream in here. Listen, listen. Listen, ch check this out now, check this out now. Jonah says, look, just throw me on over because the storm ain't going to stop until the mindset changes. Watch this. Jonah has a mindset change Amen. and gets an agreement with God with what it is that God requires from Jonah, which is to say that God wants a mindset change from you to get an agreement with what it is that he said for you. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. Jonah all of a sudden thrown over gets into the water and then I'm landing the plane right here because we're going to get out of here and go home on tonight. Somebody say leap over it. Leap over it. Yeah, somebody say stay in his presence. Yeah. Come on, somebody say stay in his presence. Stay in his presence. Yeah, somebody, somebody say change your, change, your change your perspective. Come on, say change your perspective. Somebody say be particular, be particular. about your purpose. Your purpose. Be particular yeah. about your purpose. Closing this up right here so we can get out of here. The other thing is, if you're going to get from there, you need to know that right in the midst of your course correction, uh, that God is already prepared. Come on now. Yeah. God is already prepared. See, see, God knew that you were going to make the decision to run from Him. Mm -hmm. He knew that you didn't necessarily want to receive the call that's on your life that you got. Uh, can, I, can I just really be bold and honest? Most folk uh, who really call ain't trying to do that no way. I'm telling on myself. Uh, <laughs> most folk that really, I just want to talk, most folk that are really anointed, they didn't ask for the anointing. God chose them. They didn't even choose God. God chose them. Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to in here tonight? I know you want me. I'm talking to you. God didn't, you didn't choose God, but he chose you. So you decided, you thought that because you club for a little bit, because you were out there in the street for a little while, you thought that God had changed his mind. Somebody say, wrong, <laughs> wrong, 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 uh, wrong, 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 wrong. God was already prepared uh, way before you decided to give him a no and God said I'm going to keep the pressure on you until you give me a yes. I'm so excited tonight that God already prepares for my rabbit trails. I'm so excited tonight that God already prepares when I'm headed down the wrong pathway that God pre-plans to get me right back in alignment with him to do what it is that he said that he has called me to do. Is there anybody excited tonight about God's preparedness? Jonah thinks he's going to commit suicide if I could push the envelope that far past the He thinks he's going to 
going to commit suicide by just saying, throw me overboard. But God said, you can't even die until you finish what it is that I called you to do. I feel the Holy Ghost in the night. You can be as high as you want, but you won't die until God has finished doing what he said he's going to do.
about to shorten the distance for you. He's about to shorten the distance for you. He's about to shorten the distance for you. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. He's about to shorten the distance for you. All he needs is a yes, Lord. 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 Come on, somebody magnify him. Stand on your feet. We get ready to get out of here all tonight. Hallelujah. 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 said to Jeremiah, fear not their faces, God, we say yes. Oh Lord, we thank you tonight. God, we give you a yes tonight. God, that we'll be obedient to what you've asked from each one of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, somebody say amen.